Now, we have to realize, though, that his resurrection, because that's, this is the main thing that we're talking about right now, his resurrection changes everything. But we have to be able to get our heads around that because so far we have just lived honestly. Basically, we've tried to live as New Testament Jews. And we've created a religion out of a relationship. When God was trying to create a relationship out of religion, do you understand that? He took it as far as he could at the time. But it was always religion and it could not get the job done that he wanted to get done in the sense that it could not give life. So he had to have a new covenant. And that new covenant was brought about by the body and blood of Jesus being broken and shed. So now, as we, we're going to participate here momentarily with communion, then we're going to partake understanding why we do it and what all it includes. But I want, I keep, this keeps coming up. <clears throat> what we do has to be, we have to understand that what he did changed everything. And it created a race of being. You know, they say that we only use 10% of our brain, some less, some more, okay. <laughs> but, okay. Imagine how much less of the mind of the spirit do we walk in? How much less of the actual walking in the fullness of the spirit are we leaving behind? In other words, I've said it before. Um, Miles Monroe came out with a great teaching concerning the kingdom years ago. But the problem was the people that heard it were so carnal that they couldn't see what he was trying to do. They, all they heard was, if I understand the principles of the kingdom, I can get my bills paid, I can get a car if I need one, I can get my house paid off by applying the principles of the kingdom rather than understanding the purpose of the kingdom. See, the reason God wants you to not have to worry about all these things, you know, whether a bill is going to get paid, whether a mortgage is going to get paid, all that stuff is so that you can be free to think about advancing the kingdom, so that you can be free to actually cause, to go out and witness to people, cause them to get converted, display the power of God, which, showing the goodness of God, should draw men to repentance. Why? But you can't do that if you're always under the burden in the back of your mind, what about this? What about that? What if I can't pay this? How am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to do these things? How am I going to afford gas to get to work? See, the enemy wants to keep you in that system, which is, <clears throat> very honestly, a Babylonian system. It is not the system of God. It is not the kingdom of God. God's kingdom says, take no anxious thought. You have a heavenly father who is God, who knows what you have need of before you even ask. And he's already made provision for it. Amen? And because of that, he wants you to get past having to worry about things. And he wants you to say, don't worry, trust me. I will take care of you. And you say, but, but will he take care of us in these physical things? That's why Jesus first sent the 12 out with nothing. He said, don't take anything with you. And when they came back, he asked them and said, did you lack anything? No. Why? Because he took care of them. He was showing them, I can take care of your physical needs as well as the spiritual needs. Yeah. He's not just a spirit being. You understand? You're not just a spirit being. God, when he first created man, which was his plan, he created man, spirit, soul, and body. That means he had to have provision for man physically. And that's what he did with this world. He gave us everything in this world that we need for our physical provision. Now, there's different ways to get it. You can do it the world's way or you can do it the kingdom way. And if you do it the world's way, it's a hard road to hoe, all right? It's rough. But if you do it the kingdom way, 
now, which, was, which means what? Simply put, God first, love him, and your fellow man. And when you put those things first, he takes care of the rest. And your faith in him, your trust in him, you start to realize he is El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide for you. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals you. What is there to work? If you go through all of the names, you will realize that those names cover every aspect of humanity. There is nothing you will ever need that one of those names doesn't guarantee that God will provide. Right? Now, there is the natural side, and then there's the spiritual side. And you have to put those two together so that you can walk in the spirit. And when you do, the natural gets taken care of almost automatically. Right? Why? Because as you're doing the spiritual principles, it causes the natural principles to fall into place. When God created this world, he started in the spirit. And he spoke the end result. And that's what we see now. Now, now we see a fallen world, but we also know that his spirit in us, now the whole, even all creation groans waiting for us to show up and manifest as his son, just like Jesus did. Imagine if just the people in this room and the people watching even now live over the internet, imagine if every one of us could step out into a different place and immediately go to the place where they're hungry and be able to miraculously manifest food the way Jesus did. If the church could do that, how quickly do you think we could end hunger on this earth? Because I can tell you right now, contrary to popular belief, the world is not overpopulated. Okay? At this point, the world could handle still exactly how many are on earth now, they, it could handle it again. In other words, if it doubled, the earth still has the resources to take care of everything. They're entire, now, what does that mean? That means that the deserts would have to bloom, which he promises. Isn't that right? Why? Because when you own the property, it's supposed to be blessed. It shouldn't be barren. It should produce. Amen? Amen? 